Okay, cool. Let me guys to start. Um, let me share my screen first. Okay, here is it. Does everyone see that? Yes. Yes. Okay, cool. Thanks. Uh, <clears throat> today, I would like to introduce, uh, together with Andre and Igor, um, some sort of not like everyday technology where you probably uh, using or probably know something. But uh, from my seven years experience and from like, like guys experience, we found like uh, this technology is pretty interesting. And we basically right now um, work in the company uh, using this technology for our current project. So our presentation named into the beam <laughs> which sounds interesting but uh, have, have transparent like understanding why is that because the beam is the name of the virtual machine which runs Erlang and elixir uh, code inside of it uh, let's go and we'll talk about more about the history of the language so the history are completely related to the telecom stuff. The Ericsson company uh, has invented like for a laboratory in 1984 to research and develop some sort of updates regarding to their telecom devices. The goals what they wanted to reach is what's related to perform the, the maximum stable and like reliable and robust devices for telecom industry. Uh, if you probably know that there are some almost the, uh, one from the top companies, which is like developing the telecom uh, devices until now, they still continue working with that. And like, they are like uh, putting a lot of efforts into the Erlang, uh, still, still putting a lot of effort uh, uh, efforts into the growing uh, Erlang as a language, etc. So the early version prototypes of Erlang was presented in 1987, uh, and it was basically implemented using Colloq language. So they went to the like declarative style for under, from from the start of that. But uh, the real implementation, the first one, was, uh, was under 1981. Uh, then they did a lot of various uh, improvements. And at the end of 1988, they, uh, they started, uh, they moved to open source the uh, Erlang OTP platform at, at all. So basically, um, the, the Erlang is totally open source programming language where like a lot of users are contributing and a lot of like uh, a big community are supporting that. And of course, the Ericsson still supporting that from their side. They like uh, doing a lot for the improvements, for the next releases, etc. Yes, it's, it's like. Okay, uh, let's move forward. Uh, the main consists consist of, of BIM language contains some sort of like insights, like this completely functional language. It has totally mutability. So once the variable was assigned, they, they never can be changed. Hold on, cannot catch my mouse. What's that? Oh, no, 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 Erlen, yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, guys, I, I, I will try not to like interrupt myself for, for the chat. Uh, please keep your notes with the, with the questions block to Q&A uh, block after the presentation if it's possible. If it's super urgent, just like uh, interrupt me, <laughs> okay? Thank you. Where is my mouse? Okay, let's let's move. 
moving forward. Hold on. I still have the chat window. Okay. Uh, also, the main language thing is related to the pattern, pattern matching. It happens every, every time when you're doing any sort of operations. Uh, you are matching uh, inside the functions, you are matching the variables, you are matching another uh, closest cases, etc. So, Elanc is situated for working row binaries. It's super easy to like um, match the binaries, cut them off, take the only payload, what do you need, process the binaries, and produce the binaries, of course. Uh, also, the concurrency model of Perlang is totally, is like almost related to actor model implementation. Each of the concurrent items inside the language is an actor which has their own mailbox and uh, it goes through the message passing between the process, between these concurrent modules. So no shared memory, just message passing and just a profit. OTP is a part of Erlang which contains uh, such behaviors which allows you to implement most use, uh, most everyday case, cases regarding to various of the um, flows what you are implementing. We will talk about this a bit more later. Also, Erlang from, from the, out from the box supporting clustering which helps you to combine few nodes inside one the cluster make your cluster transparent with the communication between the, um, your processes inside the VM uh, through the messaging, etc. Uh, also, the BIM VM supports whole code reloading. It means that in runtime, it allows you to make an upgrade of your system without any downtime. This is basically all the things, uh, the, the main thing what guys from Ericsson wanted to reach that just make an upgrade without stopping, uh, stopping the runtime system. They did that, it works, it is used, and everyone's happy, <laughs> almost. Uh, let's talk about some sort of data types because Erlang is uh, Erlang and Elixir based language, BIM languages is not really like, um, Rich on data types, we have uh, like integer floats binaries uh, as a usual data, data types for transferring data. Also, we have like um, we have uh, list tuples and maps which we can use for like combining all other uh, other data inside. And we also have some sort of technical data types. This basically used every day inside when you are working with that one, but it doesn't something which contains some sort of payload, feed, link, monitor, and add atom. Atom can be used for the matching almost everything inside the VM, which gives you ability to write the declarative, clean, and transparent code, which can be understood by anyone, like as a like raw book. So this like part of Atom. Uh, which helps to do that. Bit is the basically process ID. This is the main, like the um, major data type, which helps you to communicate between the processes. Because using process ID, we can send uh, the message to any of the process by using bit. Link and monitor is something interesting data type. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, I missed some. Yeah, I, I missed a bit of um, slides uh, sequence. So I'm go I'm going to links monitor some bits and we'll we'll, we'll back to the power matching uh, slide. So basically, links and monitors. This is something pretty useful stuff which can helps you to track uh, your process uh, your processes. So link basically. This is something which which is said between two processes. If and if any from this process dies, uh, the second process will receive exit signal from that process, and it will also uh, can be terminated by the default uh, configuration. In terms of the monitors, 
it's one way like monitoring of the process and in case of that process dies, you're just receiving a message that this process died and that's it. The same sort uh, of monitors can be used for monitoring nodes inside the cluster, which keeps like real reliable uh, the information of your uh, inside your system about the system status or process status. Uh, about pattern matching, it pretty useful stuff because it helps to like make super transparent your uh, code description, etc. For example, we can see uh, the function uh, based on the input number. We we returning the information. What's the data is for example. So in this case, we are returning it super fast. The code is clean, super readable, etc. This is what the pattern pattern matching does. The pattern matching is the side effect of the limitation of immutability of the VM, but pretty useful tool for reading the code. Uh, I talked about binaries. I just added some sort of example which helps you uh, to make some, some decoding of your like uh, MP3 file for get some information about the MP3 frame header take the information from mp3 header, etc. So right now, we'll be spreading out all the frame information and uh, taking them here, etc. and uh, returning back uh, the rest of the file after the decoding process. So Igor, uh, jump ahead, share your screen, and follow with the next part. To, uh, uh, Let's talk about more about the actor model. Uh, okay, just a second. <coughs> uh, so guys, uh, let me uh, tell you more about actor model. <coughs> uh, if you want to take uh, the advantages of the modern hardware that is available now, uh, we need a way to run our code concurrently. And uh, an alternative uh, to the threads uh, is an actor model. Uh, so uh, let me uh, tell you more about it. So uh, actually the model defines uh, some uh, general uh, rules for how the system components should behave and interact uh, with uh, each other. And the most famous language that uses this model is probably Erlang and uh, also Elixir. So, uh, the actor is a primitive uh, <coughs> unit of computation and it's uh, the thing that receives the message and do some kind of computation based on the message contents. The idea uh, is, uh, let's say, uh, very similar to the ob uh, object-oriented languages. An object receives a message or a method call for OOP and does uh, something de uh, depending on which it receives or which method were called. <clears throat> uh, the main difference is that the actors are completely isolated uh, from each other and they will never share memory. <clears throat> it's also important to know that uh, an actor can maintain a private state. They can never, buy uh, can never be changed uh, uh, directly by another actor. Uh, and uh, another feature of the actors is actually that one actor is not an actor. Uh, actors come uh, in a bunch in a system and in the actor model everything is an actor and they need to have uh, addresses uh, so one actor can send the message uh, to another actor. So uh, as you already know uh, actors have a mailboxes and uh, it's important to understand that uh, also multiple actors can run at the same time and, uh, but the actor uh, will process a given message sequentially. This means that if you send, uh, for example, three messages to the same actor, uh, it will just execute uh, uh, one at the same time. So to run it in a parallel, you have to create three actors and then uh, and send them three uh, messages to run in, in a parallel way. <coughs> uh, Actors communicate with each other by uh, sending uh, messages. These messages are stored in the uh, actor's mailboxes uh, until, until they will be processed. 
Uh, and when uh, an actor receives message, it can uh, do uh, several things with it, uh, with, uh, uh, with the message. Uh, create more actors, uh, send message uh, to another actor, uh, uh, and decide what to do with the next message. Uh, uh, that uh, basically means uh, uh, how, will, uh, how the internal state will be uh, modified. <clears throat> uh, uh, what about uh, distribution in actor's model? Uh, uh, <clears throat> Uh, an interesting uh, aspect of the actor model is that uh, it doesn't matter if the actor that I'm sending a message uh, uh, to uh, is running locally or in uh, another node. Mm, is, uh, you should understand that uh, an actor is just, of, uh, is just a unit of code with a, with a mailbox and the internal state and uh, it just responds to a message. Uh, and uh, no matter where, where, where this process was uh, started. <coughs> uh, so, uh, another one uh, important point uh, of uh, Beam virtual machine, uh, machine is a concurrency. <coughs> As a part of the uh, Erlang grind time system, uh, Beam, uh, Beam is responsible for scheduling uh, Erlang processes. Uh, this is where actually the concurrency magic happens. Uh, the beam uh, uses uh, one <coughs> operation system thread per core. It runs uh, a scheduler uh, on each uh, of these threads and uh, each scheduler pulls processes uh, to run from its own uh, run or task queue. Uh, in order to understand uh, uh, how cool this is, uh, it is, uh, we need to understand the Erlang relationship with the uh, uh, concurrency. <coughs> mm. uh, in a single uh, core world, uh, computers had uh, the ability to execute processes concurrently, uh, but not in the parallel, but uh, <coughs> looks like uh, concurrent and parallel uh, are not the same thing. And uh, uh, to to explain this, uh, the difference um, I found, as I think, very uh, good example with a uh, land with uh, uh, washing your laundry. <clears throat> uh, and uh, let's imagine uh, we are doing something we hate it, in laundry, and uh, we and uh, we sort our darks from lights, and go ahead to the laundromat. And uh, laundry takes too much time, so we try to minimize it our uh, time uh, at the laundromat uh, and instead of uh, doing each load uh, of laundry synchronously we load the darks in one machine and the lights in uh, in the other we add the soap to one machine and then to the other we add the coins to one machine and then to the other and press start on one machine and in the second one and this uh, represents a concurrent uh, set of process uh, both the dark load of laundry and the light load uh, are in the same state and at the same time, but this uh, could be happened uh, as a result of quickly switching uh, between the tasks. And uh, <coughs> in the uh, concurrent uh, one core world, <coughs> sorry guys. <clears throat> in the concurrent one core world, Erlang VM run on the thread with one scheduler and one available core. The scheduler chooses uh, Erlang process from the single run queue and gives a time slice to each process. If a process exceeded its time slice, the Erlang VM would pass the process, put it back in the queue and move it to the next item. <clears throat> and uh, uh, today uh, on the multi-core processes, uh, we have uh, uh, another one situation <coughs> and after some steps of evolution of the uh, Erlang VM, each thread run uh, on its own scheduler uh, that pulls from its very own run queue and the data is not shared across queues so there is no uh, need to manage the logs. Uh, and uh, going back to the uh, example with uh, Landrin, uh, imagine uh, we have a uh, we have a friend which is a strange one <clears throat> who is who is who loves to do laundry, 
uh, and uh, uh, he will do uh, all the processes uh, in uh, parallel. Uh, so uh, let's move uh, to the shared memory. <clears throat> Probably we have uh, already uh, we'll already said you that uh, Beam doesn't have a shared memory, but uh, sorry guys, we lied to you. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a <clears throat> sorry. Uh, uh, Erlang actually uh, have the uh, have the shared memories or some sort of it. Uh, shared memory <clears throat> in Erlang is uh, and the elixir is presented uh, by uh, Erlang uh, uh, term storage. Uh, Erlang uh, term uh, storage uh, is a key value database that could store a huge amount of data with a constant access time and uh, it's being created uh, by a process and owner and belongs to it and uh, if owner uh, process or uh, owner terminates uh, data data is EDS system is being destroyed uh, let's uh, move on <coughs> another one feature uh, of uh, let's uh, uh, another one feature of the beam vm is actually otp or open uh, telecom uh, platform uh, otp is a set of uh, erlang libraries uh, which uh, consists of the Erlang runtime uh, and the number of uh, ready to use components mainly written in Erlang and uh, uh, sometimes uh, in C. <coughs> um, OTP provides uh, <coughs> uh, models and behaviors that represent standard uh, implementations of common practices and uh, instead of reinventing the wheel with uh, every new application uh, you could uh, use battle tested uh, interfaces that's already uh, that was already created earlier so here i should stop thank you uh, let's move on sorry oh, sorry guys go on please Uh, okay, now I want to tell you a little about frameworks. One moment, I will uh, share my screen. I see my screen or no? Yeah, we see. Okay, cool. Uh, when we work with Erlang and Elixir, we have not only such privileges like functional programming, power tolerance, OTP, etc., but also we have big community and good Erlang and Elixir programmers, open source projects, and many open source frameworks and libraries in different categories. Most of such uh, libraries we can find on HexPM. Uh, HexPM includes more than 10,000 uh, packages and more than 4 million downloads per yesterday. And also, if we say something about Elixir like languages, uh, from the GitHub statistic, we can see that Elixir takes 36 places among the most popular languages with more than 60,000 uh, repos. And uh, also, we have such helping resources like Elixir Forum, on which uh, in the last 30 days we are near 3,000 active users and more than 18,000 uh, topics per all time. And statistics from uh, Stack Overflow show that Elixir is between most loved programming languages. And yeah, it is all cool. Uh, but what about frameworks? Everyday frameworks, uh, every day we use such frameworks like Phoenix. It is web framework which uh, 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 implements uh, the server-side model via control. Uh, but um, Ecto is an official Excel project providing a database wrapper and integrated query languages. LAC is a specification uh, that allows various frameworks of communication with various web servers running in Erlang virtual machine. Distillery is a release manager 
mix is a build tool that provides tasks for creating, computing, and testing Elixir project and absence the GraphQL toolkit for Elixir. Uh, Phoenix framework include Phoenix framework is a web framework for Elixir inspired Ruby and Rails. In the base, he has a model view controller pattern. It optimized for developer joy and productivity. Also, it has plug actor callboy channels, pop sub, etc. Uh, we can uh, select several main parts of the Phoenix frameworks. It is endpoint. It is place where our requests start and end. It is router, uh, router parsing can request and dispatches them to the correct controller action passing parameters as needs, etc. Uh, another part it is controller. Controller provides functions, calls, actions to handle our requests. Then we go to the views. Views render templates uh, act as a presenta presentation layer and templates. Templates is files containing the contents uh, that will be served in a response. Also, we have such part like channels, uh, which manage sockets for easy real-time communication and pops up, which underlies uh, the channel layer and allows client to subscribe to topics. Yes, many theories we have today. Uh, if uh, we see on this picture, we will see Phoenix web server architecture. Uh, as can we see that uh, requests come uh, on endpoint with plugs, then go to the router. From router, it go to the controller, and after this, the uh, controller selects some information from database and sends this information to view and then uh, we create a response in template and send to client. Another uh, library is Actor. Actor is a language integrated query composition tool and database wrapper for Elixir. Actor can work with Postgres, with MySQL, with MSSQL, and with ETC. ETC. Uh, Actor is built around four main abstraction. It is repos, gemmas, query, and chunk set. Repo is a, a repository represents a connection to an individual database. Chemas, chemas is are our data definitions. They define table names and fields as well as each field type. Query. Query type both chemas and repositories together, allowing us to elegant retrieve data from the repository and cast it into the chambers themselves. And last is chance sets. Chance sets de declare transformation we need to perform on our data before our application can use it. This includes the type casting validation, etc. cetera. Uh, we have such architecture of uh, such picture about our common query separation. And the last library about which I want to tell you is Plug. Plug is a specification for composable models between web applications and also a Plug connection adapter for different web services in the Erlang virtual machine. Plug connection uh, looks like when we send request, it goes to the one plug, then to another, plug models, then to another, etc. And after all plug models, it uh, goes to the routers. And that's all what I want to say you about frameworks. Uh, another uh, thing is testing. First question is what I want to ask is, why do we need to write tests? In my opinion, tests give, uh, uh, give us confidence that applications work in the correct way. Another is uh, by means of tests, we can confirm to the customer that everything is done according to the task. And also tests help to us find the weaknesses of the application. But no need to turn the development of an application into writing tests. What are tests? Uh, tests is a software which uh, check our code and we can automate it, this. Uh, I want to highlight three types of tests. It is unit tests. Uh, unit tests are usually the tests with uh, the smaller possible scope. Uh, they are testing the smallest and most of the time isolated part of the code. 
if, for example, if you want to create a function which has two numbers, uh, then the unit test would be the test we check if a sum of those numbers is correct. Another test, kind of test is integration tests. Integration tests are a group of tests which are testing how some parts of the functionality are working together. And last type is uh, UI or user interface test. UI tests are the tests which uh, simulate user behavior. If uh, we're thinking about proportion of tests, uh, I think it uh, looks like a pyramid. Uh, we should have many unit tests, and last of all, we have we should have UI tests. In the middle of these pyramids, we have integration tests. What we have in Elixir for testing? First of all, we have a uh, testing framework in X unit. Uh, another, what we have is doc test, is a macro that uh, search a specific model for quota examples and automatically generate test cases. XUnit doc test implements functionality similar to Python doc test. Also, we have actor adapter SQL sandbox. It is a pool for concurrent transactions tests. And also, we have such library like mock. It's a library for defining concurrent mocks in Elixir. Yeah, we have many theory today. Uh, let's uh, look on some example. Uh, Let's create a, a simple project. Uh, for this, we can use the Mix new UX test example. By default, uh, Mix create a test directory, which included two files, test helper and XX example. And for run this test, for run test in this project, we can use Mix tests. Uh, now, let's add a simple test, which uh, will check does uh, one plus one will equal three. When we will run this test, we will see that it failed. Uh, and from the information which gives for us uh, Elixir was that uh, in which line uh, what code are failed. Uh, let's rewrite this test on success. I mean, one plus one will equal two. And end one, another test which will check does one plus one not will equal three. Uh, after running these tests, uh, those tests, we will see that uh, it's success. Uh, if we will speak about the session, we have different function like assert, assert in delta, etc. will help us to check our unit tests. Also, we can run our test uh, in a, a sim, we can write a sim test. What I mean, uh, we will we can add to the model uh, options like async true. Uh, let's look uh, let's look on these two examples. On the first, we will add process sleep on thousand millisecond, and on to the second test, we will add process sleep on one thousand and five hundred millisecond. When we, when we will run the, those tests, we will see that it finished in 2.5 seconds, which it is correct if we will run in sync, synchronic variants. Uh, in the second uh, uh, top, uh, column, you can see that uh, we will add option async true, and after run tests, uh, it run it uh, in uh, 1.5 seconds. And, uh, it is uh, correct because we will run, we will run it in uh, the async, asynchronous uh, mode. That's all from my side, Valery. Okay, thank you. Okay, guys, hope you see my screen. Uh, let's talk a bit more about how to build package, deploy and run that apps using Erlang, Elixir, any sort of BMWM languages. The ancient times, like it was 2014, 13 and 14, we did like a huge make files. We run like, uh, 
Uh, the Erlang compiler for the separated folders, libs, etc. It was pretty like odd and strange, but till now did this will change it into pretty interesting like way. So right now we have different like tools which helps us to bring all the benefits of like how to make the building of the project building releases, etc. So using Erlang, you can probably know something about Rebar 3, which is basically the top like build, build tool, which is used for almost every project. As an alternative for Erlang, uh, someone's still using Erlang MK, which is based on make file, but also has like pretty straightforward interface for making Erlang project as well, but like, not frequently used instead of like rebar. <clears throat> For Elixir project, as Andre mentioned, uh, everyone is using Mix for for the building the Elixir project, which is pretty pretty great. Um, and uh, all, all, all satisfying with all the things and features what he has. Also, all of them are completely adjustable and configurable. Uh, also, some of them can be used for like, you can like update with the plugins, templates if you need it. So it's, it's fine. It's a totally customizable tool and pretty, looks pretty good for the building projects. The packaging of Erlang and Elixir projects uh, goes to releases. Uh, what is that? Releases basically, this is something output from the compilator uh, together with your, all your project dependencies. And also, optionally, you can include the ERTS, like the Beam VAM can be included into release. This release can be packaged and delivered. What does it mean? That if you are going to deploy it somewhere, you don't need to have pre-configured Erlang OTP VM install it, etc., etc., etc. So you can you can run out from the box all your code without any sort of other dependencies which required by anything else. So everything can be compiled in the, inside the release, which will be versioned, etc. If you can, if you can see um, in the left part of the screen, there are like uh, folder structures of the release, each of the release. Uh, doesn't matter if it's Erlang or if it's Elixir, it's totally the same. So inside the bin directory, we have like um, uh, scripts for run uh, for run the release to maintain the release, to like proceed with the clustering, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Year to S is optional, which is included like the, all the BIM VM uh, inside. Leap is directory, which contains all the dependencies together with your app, what you are like uh, implementing, et cetera. The really, using Mix or in, any of Rebar 3 is pretty straightforward to build the releases uh, by using only one comment, like Mix release, or for example, like Rebar 3 release. That's it, that's uh, everything what you need to know about how to build the releases. You can make also a, a customization on, on top of your releases, but it's not a, of the topic of the current presentation. Also, both of Erlang and Elixir are pretty familiar with the containerization and uh, basically in hex docs PM. By Phoenix, we can use like we can use like the standard uh, Docker file which attached there. We can we 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 have like public uh, Docker containers which supports Elixir from the out from the box uh, the same way as Erlang. So here is the small example of how it can be counter how we counterize uh, no <laughs> how we make container from our Erlang or Elixir app. Uh, what about deployment on run? So, as I mentioned previously, we can easily build therefore RPM packages based on our releases because it's pretty straightforward structure. There are a couple of uh, tools which helps to like build uh, the dev or RPM packages, or you can use like your own by your like uh, recommendation or like, your like familiarity or etc. 
Also, because of that, we can use any sort of uh, cloud deployments uh, using any containerization source uh, based on Kubernetes, Azure, and, uh, uh, container, uh, containers, AWS, ECS, etc. Also, there are some like links which helps you to bring your uh, Erlang Elixir apps to AWS uh, being stuck. Uh, by using, I believe that it should be something containerized. But anyway, uh, Beanstalk is pretty like straightforward technology which helps you to bring all, all the things we do need it uh, to that. Also, um, Heroku supports Elixir all from the box the same way as Erlang supports that. Uh, I mean, Heroku supports Erlang as well as Elixir. So, and also there are some Elixir um, platform as a service, which is named Dig Elixir, where you can deploy your like pet apps or anything else, or like make some proof of concept, etc. It's easily to do that. You can like search wherever you want and like take a look, find your best way how you want to proceed with that. Um, Igor. Uh, giving yeah. a word about the domains uh, of usage. Yeah, yeah right thank on. you. Uh, so just to summarize uh, our presentation, let's uh, talk a bit about the usage of Erlang and Elixir languages. So uh, as you probably understand already, uh, Erlang and Elixir are, are niche solutions, but I, they are uh, very popular in uh, uh, some domains such as Gamelinks. Uh, due to uh, its uh, parallel uh, Erlang and Elixir, I mean parallel nature and ability to handle uh, a huge amount of events uh, at the same time. Uh, they're very popular in gambling and uh, here's an examples of the companies which actually <clears throat> use them. Uh, messaging and chat, it's uh, WhatsApp and Discord, Fintech, uh, it's uh, Klarna, probably heard about it. Banking, Privat, uh, Privat24 also use it. Uh, uh, here is an example of uh, implementation of XMPP server, message broker, RabbitMQ, it's also Erlang, uh, and blockchain, uh, web application, by the way, our eHealth uh, <coughs> uh, service is uh, also created with uh, Elixir, Pinterest is Elixir, uh, uh, also video streaming, and even uh, Internet of Things solutions. And uh, so guys, thank you. Uh, probably, if you have uh, any questions, uh, let us know. So, guys, do we use it in software in some projects, or what is your uh, interest in Erlang? Yes, so right now, uh, currently, me, Igor, and Andre, we are working with the Erlang and Elixir project. I'm working uh, as a part of uh, Imperata project. We're using Erlang with the, together with the eJobRD. So and there are a couple of more Erlang apps, uh, which provides like the secure messaging for the healthcare industry. Guys, what's your project, Igor? Yeah, we use uh, Elixir. Uh, our project uh, is about uh, uh, some news. Uh, our project is a uh, uh, news application, and uh, Igor has a new. Your project is TV application, yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. It's a, a big API uh, to get an update, uh, uh, update applications uh, on the mobile, on mobile phones and TVs. Like provisioning mobile devices with some of set of applications which requires to be installed there, right? Uh, yeah, right. Thank you. Okay, good to know that we have something. Let's say Nishi, yeah, as well. Guys, any other questions? Is is there any site or any I don't know entry point to to Erlang? Uh, to let's say I don't know, is it worth to learn Erlang still or Elixir is actually way way to so start with basically, this stuff? Uh, Good to know Erlang because Erlang uh, gives more like um, more knowledge about the BIM VM. 
but Elixir provides a more easier interfaces to bring like the value uh, more faster. Because of I, I, I told previously that it is not rich in like sort of um, data types, like it has less complexity than like other uh, top industrial languages, such as, for example, Java or C Sharp. So mm -hmm. on board, the new guy uh, working with Erlang or Elixir we, will be way, way faster than learning Java or C Sharp from scratch. Uh, what, what was your, your background? You had a C, C, C++ background or you, you were... Uh, I, I, I previously uh, started my career as a Java developer. Okay. I switched to Erlang. So I'm in love uh, in Erlang and Beam te technologies and still working with Beam and don't want to get back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Also, I want to add to the, about Elixir that Elixir it is Erlang plus Ruby. We have Erlang virtual machine with uh, Ruby uh, style of programming, of programming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With Sugar from Ruby. <laughs> <laughs>